the history we know is wrong. Before proceeding, be warned. The following video will challenge everything we know about our past. If that bothers you, please click away. You have been warned. For no historian has been able to explain the following. This case remains unresolved. In the spring of 1897, I dug the little woke up one morning to a loud bang that had to be to in the morning. I ran outside and saw on my farm that a windmill was destroyed. In the field was a machine, a flying machine. I had never seen one before. It came from the sky. It was an airship. In the wreckage, I saw a body. I, I was closer and discovered the corpse that belonged to a pilot was no human. All the wreckage, I could see strange markings. Not in English, but some strange hieroglyphs. I panicked and did not know what to do. We did the thing of Christian burial at the nearby cemetery. I have never fully comprehended what I saw that day, and I never will. Aurora, Texas, 1897. Something strange happened. The following events would put the small Texas town on the national spotlight. There was a big loud explosion. Debris was scattered over several acres. Windows were shattered from a sonic boom, sending the townspeople into a scurry investigating what the source of the noise was. Upon investigation, that's where they learned that the machine came from the sky. But what they found in the wreckage would be mesmerizing. In the wreckage, they found a corpse. The corpse that belonged to the pilot. While the pilot had human characteristics, there was something strange about him. The pilot was shorter in stature. And its facial features, well, looked like nothing from this world. The Fort Worth paper reported that a Martian crashed at this farm and that the humanoid was given a Christian burial at the local Aurora Cemetery. Believe it or not, this spectacle was a part of a larger UFO wave the United States encountered during 1896 and 97. Thousands of people across the country would report seeing strange lights in the sky and airships. This time in history has left historians perplexed because people saw numerous flying airships before the Wright brothers even had their first successful flight in 1903. What did thousands of Americans see in the sky during this 16-month period? Was it a strange invention? A Martian spaceship? Or was it mass hysteria? Join us as we unravel the mystery of the 1896 and 1897 UFO wave.
on whom we stand and submit its declaration to the sober and considerate judgment of the American people. November 4th, 1896. Americans woke up to the news that Republican William McKinley defeated opponent William Jennings Bryan. Little did anyone know, bizarre news would follow the following weeks. Sacramento Bee and the San Francisco Call reported a mysterious airship on November 18, 1896. Eyewitnesses reported a light moving slowly over Sacramento on the evening of November 17 at an estimated 1,000 feet elevation. Witnesses claimed to see a bright flashing light. The following months, thousands of people would see these airships across the country. From California, to Iowa, to Nebraska, to Indiana. The media was having a field day reporting these mysterious phantom airships. One bizarre encounter happened in Warsaw, Indiana, 1896. During a stormy evening, a wagon maker during his break witnessed something in the sky. In his own words, he described a large floating object that resembled a temple. The eyewitness goes on to say the floating structure was plainly visible and had people walking around in it. Reporters denounced the eyewitness and claimed the witness only spotted a mirage. Some other accounts during the wave of airships reported that occupants were visible on some airships and encounters with the pilots were reported as well. These occupants often appeared to be human, though their behavior, mannerisms, and clothing were sometimes reported to be unusual. Sometimes the apparent humans made strange claims, such as being from the planet Mars or descendants of the lost tribe of Israel. But were these claims credible? There is only one way to find out. After hours of what appeared to be endless research, there are three plausible theories. Theory number one, yellow journalism. Historians claim yellow journalism was prevalent among the news media at the time. Alleged true stories were often exaggerated or completely fabricated to increase the sales of newspapers. In one bizarre example of yellow journalism, an article in the Albion Weekly News reported that two witnesses saw an airship crash just inches from where they were standing. The airship suddenly disappeared, with a man standing where the vessel had been. The airship pilot showed the men a small device that supposedly enabled him to shrink the airship small enough to store the vessel in his pocket. All in all, 
historians and UFOologists cannot use the media at the time as a credible source. But still, there were credible witnesses that witnessed these strange aircrafts, such as engineers, state senators, and scientists. Why would reputable people lie to the public? Number 2. 19th Century Innovations Some argued that the airships reported were genuine accounts, but they were not Martian-made. Steerable airships had been publicly flown in the U.S. since 1862. Numerous inventors were working on airships at that time. At one point, the public suggested inventor Thomas Edison was behind the Phantom airships. However, Edison denied this claim publicly. French inventor Henry Gifford built the first full-size airship. The first flight of Gifford's steam-powered airship took place September 24, 1852, 51 years before the Wright brothers' first flight. By the year 1884, human inventors demonstrated that controlled flight in the sky was possible, but the speeds of the average airship only traveled a mundane 6 miles per hour. This does not match eyewitness claims that the airships were traveling at way faster speeds. American inventor Charles Abbott Smith patented an airship blueprint and proposed that man will sail majestically in the sky in the late 19th century. In his blueprints, he described a complex metallic machine in his drawings. What makes Smith an interesting candidate is the fact he was an inventor from San Francisco. San Francisco was the first city to encounter the airship sightings in 1896. That being said, Smith's plans never left the drawing board. There is no credible evidence that his invention took flight or that he created such an aircraft. Intriguingly, Smith's name appears to be missing from the history books following his patent. While 90% of the eyewitnesses could have encountered and witnessed human-made inventions at the time, the man-made airships at the time still do not match, word for word, the description by eyewitnesses. Number 3. Natural Phenomenon Going back to the UFO encountered in 1896 in Warsaw, Indiana, could the eyewitnesses actually be witnessing a strange natural phenomenon? Meanwhile, a resident there living in Yantai City of East China's Shandong province was stunned by the sight of a mirage that towered across the skyline on early Monday morning. Tall buildings and tower cranes appeared to rise up amid thick clouds. The patterns in the mirage are typically blurred and shimmering with a resemblance to human-made structures. They are similar to a reflection seen in water. A mirage is a natural phenomenon in which light rays penetrating air layers of different densities are reflected to form an image of objects located far away. The miraculous scene lasted about four hours. After researching strange natural occurrences in the sky, I came across a scientific explanation. One such explanation is called a Fata Morgana. A Fata Morgana is a complex form of superior mirage that is seen in a narrow band right above the horizon. Fata Morgana mirages significantly distort the object or objects on which they are based often such that the object is completely unrecognizable. These mirages may be seen on land, sea, polar regions, and deserts. It may involve almost any kind of distant object, including boats, islands, and coastline. A layer of significantly warmer air may rest over colder dense air, forming an atmospheric duct that acts like a refracting lens, producing a series of both inverted and erect images. 
So, was that structure in the sky in Warsaw a type of mirage? Well, if it was a mirage, how could the eyewitness see people moving in the structure? Also, the eyewitness saw the structure above the building in the sky, and not in the horizon. Hmm. Something doesn't add up. We heard about my three plausible theories. Well, I have one more theory, and you might not like it. Number four, extraterrestrial technology. Historian Mike Dash described and summarized the 1896 and 1897 series of airship sightings, writing not only were the airships bigger, faster, and more robust than any airships created at the time, only a few cases remain perplexing. One such case took place in Vincennes, Indiana, in 1897. In Vincennes, 1897, reports came in that an unexplained airship passed over the city twice on the night of Friday, April 16, 1897. One such eyewitness was Victor Schofield. Schofield was somewhat of an expert observer. Having made airships and balloons himself, aviation was his lifelong study. Being an expert observer of the aircraft, he claimed the machine moved faster than 200 miles per hour and mentions that no human invention at the time could travel that fast. A more popular case still remains perplexing as well. That case is the story of the UFO crash in 1897 in Aurora, Texas. On November 19, 2008, UFO hunters first aired another television documentary regarding the Aurora incident, titled First Contact. In that episode, the current owner of the property claims the debris was buried in his well, and he allowed the investigators on his property. The investigators unsealed the well in order to examine for possible debris. Water was taken from the well, which tested normal, except for large amounts of aluminum present. The episode concluded the aluminum didn't match any metals available at the time of the alleged wreckage. Are these evidence the smoking gun for UFOologists? And does it also prove that we were being observed by extraterrestrials? If that's the case, why did extraterrestrials visit our planet during this particular time in human history? Near the end of the 19th century, the United States evolved rapidly during the Industrial Revolution. Americans saw advancements in manufacturing and production. New inventions were widespread. Americans saw the telegraph, the expansion of railroads, and motion pictures. The United States experienced a rapid growth of wages and became a global superpower. That being said, there were environmental implications. The world saw a major increase in population, which along with an increase in living standards, led to the depletion of natural resources. The use of chemicals and fuel in factories resulted in increased air and water pollution. Did destroying the environment get the attention of extraterrestrials? Or were they here for another reason? You decide. Thank you for watching Hoosier Ghost Crew.